Hello, and welcome to your next data visualization lecture. So we're not going to spend much time in the slides today. Most of this is going to be code, but I did want to talk to you about a couple of ideas or rather questions that are important to ask yourself when trying to create effective data visualizations. The first question you want to ask yourself is what are you trying to communicate? What is the message that you're trying to get people to understand when they look at your graph? Once you know that message, you want to figure figure out which elements of your graph support that message and keep them or add them, and what elements detract from that message and remove them. You also need to think about who the audience is for your image. What is the context that people are going to be consuming this? Are you giving a presentation at a scientific conference, or is this for the general public? Are you talking to kindergartners or professionals? And lastly, you want to ask the question, is your graph accessible? Accessibility is incredibly important to make sure that as many people as possible can get the message that you're trying to communicate from your graph. There's a wide array of things you want to think about when it comes to accessibility, but some really important ones are whether or not the graph can be read by someone who has color blindness whether the graph is suitable for people who have different types of visual impairments, and what the cultural context is of the people who are going to be consuming this graph. One thing that's really great to do when you're learning how to make good data visualization is to go to the subreddit data is beautiful and look at some of the visualizations there. You can ask yourself, what stands out to you about some of the data visualizations? What is the graph communicating? what did the person do well when they made the graph and what could they improve by looking at a wide range of data visualizations you'll get a better idea of what works and what you prefer in your data visualizations all right let's go to the code all right so again we're going to spend most of our time in code because we want to talk about what it's actually like to make an efficient data visualization in the lecture slides, we talked a little bit about some questions that you should ask yourself when you're making a data visualization. And today, our goal is basically to walk through two examples where we start off with a very basic graph and then we make changes to that graph in order to follow these questions and make it more effective. If you haven't already, make sure you load both your imports as well as these data sets that we'll be pulling from today. Let's start with a basic plot and a basic question. The question that we're trying to answer using our graph is, are penguin species different when it comes to bill length? We're going to start off with this very basic plot, which is actually something we made already in the previous lecture. Let's run this plot and take a look at what we might be able to improve. So to start off, our plot is pretty clear, but what can we change or improve about it? Well, one thing is that we could add a little bit of distinction between the different box plots for the different species. To do that, we can copy over our existing code and make some changes. The first change that I might want to make is to add a fill aesthetic so that my box plots are different colors. So we'll say fill equals species. So we basically get the same plot as before, but now with a little bit more visual distinction between the groups, which is good because remember our question is pointing attention to the differences between the groups. Next, one thing that we might want is a title to tell the reader what they're supposed to focus on in the plot. In order to do that, we're going to say plus and then this labs function. Lab stands for labels and it allows us to label both our x-axis, our y-axis, and give our plot a title. If we only wanted to set a title, we could also do this with the GD title function. So I'm going to go ahead and set the title to be do penguin species have different bill links. And when we run that, you can see exact same plot, but now we have a beautiful title. But I don't really like the clarity of my axis labels. This still has underscores. We don't really get what MM is, and we just want to make it easier to read. So let's go back to that labs function and add an X equals species and Y equals bill length in millimeters. Now when we run this, you can see we have a much better labeled plot. 
So now we've added some things that help draw attention to the question we're trying to answer. Now let's look for things that we might be able to remove so that they don't detract from our message. The first thing I see right away is I personally like a little bit more contrast in my graphs. So I want to get rid of this gray background and simplify some of the aesthetics of the plot. A really easy way to do this is just to add a new theme. I'm partial to theme minimal or theme classic. When we run that, that simple addition changes a lot of the aesthetics of our graph for us, including increasing the contrast between the background and the individual box plots, and thus reducing the amount of unnecessary ink in our plot. But we can further tweak this. For instance, I don't want any grid lines for my x axis. So I'm going to say panel underscore grid underscore major underscore x equals element blank. Element blank basically just says to remove that entirely from the graph. When I run this, you can see that again, it's the same graph, but now we no longer have any grid lines for the X axis. And honestly, now that I'm looking at it, I don't think we need grids for the Y axis either. Our question is about which species has higher or different bill lengths, and we don't particularly care what those bill lengths are, we're just comparing within species. So these grids are unnecessary. So like before, I'm gonna say panel grid major y equals element blank. And then I also have to get rid of the minor grid. So I'm gonna say panel grid minor y equals element blank. Now I can run this and I get my beautiful gridless graph. Now, one thing I notice about this graph is that if I'm presenting this to people who know a little bit about penguins, I don't really need the x-axis title of species because I already have the labels of Adeli, Chinstrap, and Gentoo on my x-axis. Now, if I were presenting to kindergartners who don't know anything about penguins, I might keep that there so that they understand that what they're looking at is species. But if I'm talking to an audience who already might know this, I'm gonna get rid of it. To do this, I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that the label for the x-axis is an empty string. All right, next I'm gonna double down on the fact that my question is really about the relative bill lengths of penguins and that I don't particularly care about the exact values. So I'm gonna get rid of all of these numbers on the y-axis. Now, if I did care about what the specific values were, I would need to leave these in because it would communicate important information. But for here, I'm gonna take them out. To do that, I'm gonna say axis text underscore y equals element blank. Running this will turn off the actual text labels on my y-axis only. Last but not least, I'm seeing a little bit of extra useless ink in my graph, and that's in this legend here. Now, I have the species of penguin on the x-axis, but I also have it in my legend because I filled by species. But this information is redundant and I don't need it in my graph. So I'm just going to completely get rid of this legend. To do that, I'm going to go into our theme function and say legend underscore position equals none. Now, when you look at this graph, you can see we've made a lot of great improvements, especially when it comes to the original. Our message here is a lot more clear. We have a title telling people what we're talking about. We've gotten rid of superfluous things that distract from our message, and we've added things like clear labels and colors that help emphasize it. Now that our message is clear, it's time to think about accessibility. One really important measure of accessibility is whether someone with colorblindness can still appreciate our plot. One thing you can do to make sure that your plot is more colorblind friendly is using a colorblind friendly palette. I've loaded one in from here, so let's add it to our actual plot. In order to change the colors that are used for an aesthetic, we have to use one of our scale functions. I'm going to go ahead and add it here. So to use a scale function, we're going to say the word scale underscore, and then the name of the aesthetic that we want to alter. In this case, we're altering the fill aesthetic, the color that's used to fill our geom. So we're going to say scale fill underscore. The last part of this function name is going to be manual because we're manually specifying what colors it is that we would like. Inside this function, we are going to paste a list of the hex values for the colors that we'd like to use, which I copied from the link above. Now, when we run our plot, we get the same exact plot as before, but now the fill aesthetic is using our colorblind friendly palette. The next thing we might want to think a little bit about is people who might have visual impairments. 
one thing we want to improve is the contrast of our graph. But when we look at our graph, we actually did a really good job. We have a lot of contrast between the background and the important visual elements of our graph. One other thing we could do in terms of contrast is make sure that the text in our graph is large enough for someone to read with a mild visual impairment. To do that, we go into our theme function and we add text equals element text, size equals, and then however big you want your text. I'm gonna set it to be 20. When we run this, you can see we get the same graph, but now our text is a lot bigger, making it easier for people to read. Another thing we can add is an emphasis on information we already have for people who might not be able to consume it in the way we've displayed it. For instance, let's add some geom points to our plot. One way to emphasize the distinction between our species is we can add another aesthetic in this geom point that says shape equals species. This will make the shape of the points that we add to our plot different for each species, thus further visually discriminating our groups. This is something that someone could see even if they can't see any of the colors that we added. So let's go ahead and run that. And you can see that we now have these shapes that are different for each species. Now, this is a beautiful looking plot, but again, we can think a little bit about the size of the different elements to make sure they are seeable by our readers. We've already changed the general size of the text, but let's see what other things we can adjust. One thing we can adjust is the size of all of these points. They're quite small, so even though they're different shapes, it's a bit hard to tell. So let's go ahead and change that. Inside our geom point, outside of the AES function, we're going to say size equals and three. This is gonna cause our points to just be a little bit larger. There we go. Now we can totally see what the different shapes are for our different species. Another thing we could do is adjust individually the different text elements of our plot. Right now, we've just set them all to be very large, but we could individually tweak them to make sure that everything is big enough. I replaced that line that changes all the text with individual lines that change different parts of the text. For instance, here, we're setting the axis text, so all those different labels to be 12. We're also setting the title on the y-axis, so this bill length thing, to be 12. And last but not least, we're making our plot title size 15. When we run this, you can see that we've now made those different changes to make sure everything is proportional but big enough for people to read. All right, let's walk through one more example. We're going to look at the Pop Divas data set and we're just going to take a look at the head. We can see this gives us a ton of information about different songs for a bunch of different Pop Divas. For instance, we can see here that there's a lot of songs by Beyonce. We have information about the danceability, energy, key, loudness, mode, which is major or minor key, and a bunch of different variables for these songs. Let's make a plot looking at the relationship between the danceability and the energy of these different songs. To do that, I'm going to start a ggplot and I'm going to say pop divas is our data frame. AES x equals dance ability, y equals energy. Now, I want to know the relationship between danceability and energy, but I think that relationship might be different, maybe not, for the different modes, so a major key versus a minor key. So I'm also going to add a color by factor mode. Remember, because mode is a zero and a one, Python thinks it's a continuous value instead of a category. Factor allows Python to know that, no, 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 this should be a category. Now that we've told ggplot what to plot, let's tell it how with a geom point, and let's run our very basic graph. Beautiful, so we can see that there is maybe a little bit of a relationship between danceability and energy, especially for low energy, low danceability songs. Let's add a couple aesthetic changes just to make this look a little better. First, I'm going to add a theme classic. And when we run that, you can see it's going to get rid of that great background and just add a little bit of simplicity to our plot. Next, I really like this plot, but I wonder if the relationships that we're looking at are different for the different artists in this data set. So if we scroll up here, we see we have a column called artist name. Let's facet wrap by that. I'm going to go ahead and add facet wrap and tilde artist name. Now when I run this, I get the same exact plot, but once 
per artist. So for instance, here we have Britney Spears versus Beyonce versus Lady Gaga, etc. Now this is beautiful, but let's make it a little more clear and readable. The first thing I'm going to do is use the labs function to change the title and the X and Y axis labels. So I go up here and I say labs X equals dance ability, Y equals energy, and title equals, we'll say pop, uh, pop divas dance ability versus energy and we have this beautiful and very clear plot the last thing i want to change is this legend over here now it's informative but it's kind of weird having this like factor mode in there we also aren't very clear on what mode means so let's change that label so people can tell I'm going to add a scale function again, and I'm going to say scale color because we're using the color aesthetic underscore discrete. This is telling us that we're looking at a scale for the color aesthetic and it's a discrete value. It's a binary like zero, one or other types of categories. Then I'm going to use the name argument to relabel this legend so it doesn't say factor mode anymore. I'm going to use uh, major one slash minor zero. Now when I run this, you can see that my legend is going to have a different label that's a little bit more informative. The last thing I wanna leave you with is just some things to think about. The first one is the cultural context that you're presenting these graphs in. This could be as simple as, are you presenting to first graders versus scientists? But it could also mean, where are you presenting in the world? Does the culture that you're in view the colors, the images, the language in your graph the same way that you do? The last thing I want to leave you with is that I can't teach you everything. There's no hard and fast rules to data visualization. All I can teach you is to be cognizant of things that make your graph more understandable. I really encourage you to dig a little bit deeper into ggplot slash plot nine because there's tons of features that we didn't even cover that you might find useful when making data visualization. All I can leave you with is the things that you should think about when making a good data visualization. All right, that's all I have for you. I will see you next time.